How I wish I could be with you today to take part in this really important meeting of GRASP. But though I'm not with you in person, I'm very much with you in spirit. I really am. And of course, I'm represented by the executive directors of several JGIs from different countries around the world. It's not often you get so many talented, committed people gathering in one place, all focused on one objective, finding a way to ensure the survival of the great apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and just for the record, I wish we could include gibbons and siamangs as well. Unfortunately, as we all know only too well, saving the great apes and their habitats is no easy task. The world is changing at a dramatic pace as human populations and economies grow. There are seven billion of us on the planet competing with each other and the animals for ever decreasing natural resources. We are logging and burning the forests where the great apes live and hunting them for food. And as our numbers increase, theirs decline. GRASP was established more than a decade ago to help those fighting for the survival of the great apes in Africa and Asia. It was an important step, a good beginning. But if we're to succeed, we must develop new strategies and a new sense of urgency. We must intensify our efforts to alleviate poverty, find alternate livelihoods for hunters and charcoal burners, and gain the goodwill and support of all those living in and around the forests. We must emphasize the important role played by forests in protecting watersheds, supporting biodiversity, and sequestering CO2. JGI is deeply involved in the Red Plus program, which makes sense now that the efforts on the ground to protect and restore forests can be verified by using GPS technology and satellite imagery. It's so important that forests should be valued both by the villagers and by corporations striving to offset their CO2 emissions. It goes without saying that they're valued by the great apes themselves. I often think back to the time over 50 years ago when I first arrived in Tanzania to start the chimpanzee research in Gombe National Park. There were well over a million chimpanzees across Africa then, inhabiting a belt of forest that stretched all the way from Lake Tanganyika to the west coast. Today, it's fragmented, and there are no more than 300,000 chimpanzees at most. We none of us want a world without great apes. Yet that's exactly the path we seem to be on unless we can change the way that we humans think about the great apes and their forest world and our own impact on the environment. If we don't, it will not only be the apes that suffer, so too will our grandchildren and theirs. Over the years, many people have done wonderful work on behalf of the great apes. And now at this gathering, there's a real chance to increase the impact of our separate initiatives by working together. Please do take advantage of the talent that is represented here and find a way to make Great Ape Conservation a global initiative. Let's make the second GRASP Council meeting a huge success and find a way to truly ensure the Great Ape survival. And I want to end with an appeal from the chimpanzees themselves. <laughs> Good luck at your meeting.